everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to play with some Dharma acid dye colors I've never played around with before. I did have a really cool poster with all the colors that I lost somewhere in my reorganization. I'm sure it'll turn up at some point, but I don't currently have anything to really help me distinguish the tones without looking at my computer, and so the best way to experience colors is really just to see how they look on yarn. So I am just going to play around and see how these different powders look on some stroll fingering weight yarn. The colors I'm going to be looking at today are True Black, Toner Black, Silver Gray, Frozen, Twilight Gray, Electric Violet, Deep Purple, Intense Iris, and Dark Navy. I'm hoping to, in the end, be able to choose two colors that have a reasonable amount of contrast to use for another project. But I really didn't want to fly into that blind. So although when I'm using the powders, the way that that'll look on the finished yarn will be a little different from when I make a dye stock, it should give me a starting point of some of the warmth or coolness of these different shades. When you're dealing with commercial dyes, personal safety is important. All of the equipment that I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment from the pans, to the cups, to the utensils. And when I'm dealing with the powders, I will also be wearing this respirator, uh, so that way I don't inhale any powders. I actually like to use a respirator or face mask now when I'm dealing with any kind of powder, even if it is food safe, because I figure there's no point in risking my lungs in any capacity. In my steam pan, I have four cups of water. I'm adding two tablespoons of white vinegar, two heaping tablespoons. Now I am going to add the yarn. This yarn is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. The yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. It's a yarn that I use a lot here on the channel, and I really, really like it. I like the way that it dyes and picks up color. Um, if you'd like to learn more about this yarn base, you can find my affiliate link in the video description. Now, there are a lot of colors that I'm planning to put on this yarn today, and it's gonna be a little slow going because I'm gonna wanna wash my hands in between going into the stock solutions so I don't contaminate it. I'm going to want to make sure that my hands are nice and dry again so I don't contaminate it. But since I'm dealing with nine different colors, I really don't want to take an aliquot out of each one and then have all that leftover dye. Um, so yeah, we're going to do the best that we can. And really, I'm just using this as a palette to help me get a sense of these different colors. And then as I add a pinch of the dye in, um, at first we're gonna do just like a little bit of each color individually. I'll use the spoon so I can get a sense of what that color is like. And then we'll let that set and then go from there and probably layer these colors on a lot more onto this skein. That pan went totally out the window a bit because the navy exploded everywhere. <laughs> Thankfully, it's fairly easy to clean up, but, uh, ah. <laughs> I just turned off the heat, but given that I'm now cleaning up this mess, let's go ahead and add some of this navy color to our yarn. Add the spoon into the container. It's definitely, ooh, that's pretty. It's definitely still hot. Um, ooh, that color is nice. Ooh, but I've got to clean up my mess. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Things are cleaned up. Now I've got some true black that I'm going to put. I'm going to take a tiny bit. That's true black. And then on the other side, I'm going to take also a little bit of the toner black. 
So from looking at the powder, the toner black looks a little warmer, a little more brown. Um, but let's see sort of how things spread out. I'm going to go rinse the spoon and sort of spread things out over here. So at first glance, they do look very, very similar. Um, maybe there's a difference in the way that they sort of speckle. Like, okay, I am seeing some reds in there with the toner black. You see that right there? There's some flecks of red. So maybe it is like a warmer, maybe true black is cooler tone and warm black or toner black is a bit warmer. Um, now I definitely have some black speckles around the whole yarn, but I think that that's okay. Now let's take a look at some of these purples. We've got deep purple. Trying to just get a tiny bit. This is electric violet. I'll put it right there. And then intense iris. I can already see right away that this deep purple is breaking into like pink and purple or like blue and navy kind of colors. Ooh. That's way more eggplanty than I thought it would be from the way it looked. Here's the electric violet. And ooh, that's a great bluish purple. That is beautiful. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Maybe the deep purple is a bit redder. But you can see it is breaking. And okay, this is the intense iris, which all right, that's probably my favorite color, purple in the world. An iris purple. Um, this is a great blurple. Um, there's definitely, also it looks like there's some breaking that we might see in there as well. So, of, the, of these purples, it seems like the intense violet, or sorry, the electric violet, I'm not sure if that breaks. I definitely, look, it looks like the deep purple breaks, and the intense iris may break a little bit. Now, whether or not those break if we were dip dyeing, I don't know. They definitely, when speckling, so I guess this is what I should clarify, while speckling, I saw multiple hues. That doesn't mean that they would necessarily break when dip dyeing, because that kind of breaking has to do with the different rates of color absorption. Now let's look at some of the grays. I've got twilight gray. Take a little bit up there. And silver gray, which you can tell is significantly paler. At least the powder. Like they look very, very different as a powder just immediately. Okay, here's the silver gray, which, yeah, that is a nice gray. It's a little darker where I added the powder. Um, I think I see some breaking or some multiple colors in this twilight gray back here. And, oh, that actually, the twilight gray reads really purple. Um, yeah, that's reading very, very purpley to me. Maybe there's some tones that haven't absorbed yet, but that is really, really pretty. But between the two of them, I would say that the silver gray is a lot more gray. The two blacks look very black. The navy actually is looking really black in that center. There is, ooh, cool. Some like, well, I guess it looks a little purpley, but we've got some more navy tones in there. But, interesting. Okay, cool. So the, yeah, that twilight gray 
I mean, it definitely feels grayish, but looking at it in person, I see, sorry, rinsing my spoon. I see a lot of tones in there. I see some reds and you could kind of see, uh, I'm not sure how much you could see, but I could see that from the speckling, um, a little bit of speckling as well, that there were multiple tones in there. The last color I'm testing right now is the color Frozen, which I think is just a kind of blue. Ooh, that is nice. Ooh, that is a beautiful, ooh, a beautiful blue. That one actually reminds me of blue number one food coloring a lot. Um, it's almost got a hint of turquoise in it, but, ooh, that's pretty. All right, I now need to stop, stop a minute, let this sort of heat and set a bit. Ooh, and take off that mask, but I need to like take a picture so I can remember what these different colors are. But if I remember correctly, we've got frozen, True black, toner black, deep navy, deep purple, electric violet, intense iris, silver gray, and twilight gray. Yeah, I think that those are the colors that we just played with. I am now going to add just a cup of water sort of around the edge um, because I don't want anything to burn. But from the way that this addition of color, it came in here it looks like a lot of the color is in fact bound um, to the yarn already but let's take a closer look let's look all right I'm seeing a hint of color oh looks like the true black has bound yeah a lot of these colors have very much maybe there's still some of that intense iris there and there's definitely some navy in here. I'm not sure what I want to do with this skein. I do think I'm going to pick it up now, though, and sort of flip over, let these colors sort of spread out, and then see how they might strike, um, see what these pops of colors are doing. Strand, I think you go that way. We've got a lot of beautiful, beautiful, deep, deep colors in here. And goodness, I'm not even really sure what I want to do with this. Um, I'm really, really excited and I'm tempted, oof, I'm tempted to take some remnant powdered yarn, even though that would be bringing some greens into it. Um, and whew, sort of sprinkling some of that on. But actually, hmm, goodness, I don't know. We're going to just start having fun. And I'm going to go into a bunch of these colors, um, washing and drying my hands in between, and just have fun and layer some of this on. I think I'm going to stick with these nine colors that I was using. But... I'm going to speed this up, so enjoy! more of the colors Frozen, uh, Twilight Gray, and Electric Violet to give us this sort of, uh, this layered, non-repeating, beautiful colorway. After I speckled on the dry powder, I let it sit for a little bit before moving it around. And there are still some pastel areas, but I wanted to cover a lot of the white. I wanted this to feel like it was one yarn versus there being many. Now, we have not sat very long after the addition of the last bit of dye, but I'm just sort of moving it 
um, to again sort of blend and expand these colors. But we have something here where even though we use nine different colors, it's feeling a lot more cohesive um, than it did initially. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for 10 minutes, allow these colors to set, and then we'll come back. Our yarn, I expect that the water is gonna feel, that is clear. Okay, there's like one hint of purple over here because there was some up on the side, but this is a pretty yarn, if I do say so myself. Um, pretty fun for sort of diving in and playing with nine different colors of Dharma Acid Dyes at once. And ultimately I went with three for this yarn, but you pretty much, it, like, it feels balanced. Like the, these tones, since they had some of the same tones of like the navies and the blacks and stuff in there, it all just works. Um, so I'm going to turn off the heat and in a moment I'm going to set this aside so it can cool off and then we can wash it. Let's wash this yarn. Oof. I am enjoying how like bright and moody this is at the same time. We are really, really saturated with all these colors and oof. And it looks like our water is clear, which is always, always great. I'm gonna add a little bit of some clear disco just to see if we get any other colors coming out. But yeah, it looks like all of our colors. Oh, is that a hint? Okay, we're having a little hint of bleeding now. So I'm gonna rinse this a few more times. It's not a lot of color compared to everything that is in the yarn. Um, so we're gonna rinse this a few times. I'm going to hang it up to dry and I'll come back and we'll look at the finished dried yarn. Oh, and look, we're already clear. <laughs> Here is our finished yarn swatch that I used to explore nine different new to me colors of Dharma acid dyes. After I had gotten a sense of the tones of a bunch of these colors, I then went and layered on some more color to try to bring the whole scheme together. And I think it worked pretty well. Clearly, you can still see some sections of the black, um, both blacks and the navy that didn't go throughout the skein. But I feel like the whole yarn is more balanced now than it was when, before I had added on all that extra dye powder. If you'd like to learn more about any of the yarn bases or materials or tools that I use in this video, you can find affiliate links in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you found this video not only helpful and maybe a little informative, but also a lot of fun. If you enjoy my approach and willingness to just go for it, uh, you should really check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, there you can get exclusive sneak peeks, early access to new videos, and behind the scenes looks, and it's a lot of fun. You can find links in the video description and iCard. For some other sneak peeks and more real-time looks at what I'm working on, you should check out the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group. This community is filled with over a thousand other fiber artists, from knitters and spinners to other indie dyers, everywhere from beginners to people who run their own shops. And we have a lot of fun and really learn a lot together as everyone is sharing their progress on their own dyeing and color experiments. Finally, make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and toggle that bell icon so you never miss a new video. Thank you so much for watching.